that's the UD Boyan here and today we will be recreating the effect used in the exhibits of Andy Chambers 4D art gallery. What we will be making is basically a hollow cube that has a different interior depending on the angle at which you are looking at it. We will also expand on this by showing how you can implement it on an object with not just a square base but a triangular one as well, like this one, or in fact you can have as many sides as you want. Here's an example with only two sides, but you can arbitrarily scale this to have as many sides as your heart desires. One possible solution to this is to use something like portals that render objects on the material that is applied to the side of the cube, but I decided to go with a different, easier and more efficient approach. We will make a material that takes the location of two edges of a side of the cube as input and renders only the part of the interior that is between those two edges. I will start with explaining the math behind this, but if you just want to see the implementation, here's the timeline of everything contained in the video, so feel free to jump to whatever part interests you. Also, if you want to download the project and play around with it, the download link is in the description. Ok, so let's open up Paint to quickly explain the maths here. So every object will have two poles that are dedicated to limiting the object's visibility. So for example, if our player is standing here, we only want to render parts of the object that are within the field of view of the player and between these two poles. So we just want to render this part of the object here while making the rest of it invisible. Our approach would be to take all possible vectors from the player to the object and check what vectors pass between the poles. So each of these points of the object that are marked with blue vectors that go inside of the poles will have opacity 1 and everything that is marked with red vectors that go outside of the poles will have opacity 0. And we can check if a vector is between the poles by checking whether the vector is between the vectors that go from the camera to the poles. How do we know if a vector is between two other vectors? We can use a 2D cross product to determine how one vector is oriented relative to another. You can watch an excellent video by Triple One Brown that explains this in depth, but in short, if our site vector is on one side of the pole vector and the other pole vector is on the same side of our vector, then that means that our site vector is between the two vectors. So if we mark our vectors with A, B and C, mathematically this roughly translates to our vector B being between the vectors A and C, only if the cross product of A and B and C and B are both positive. So basically the idea for our shader is to take each of the pixels that contain our object, find its world location, and then shoot the vector from our player to the world location of that pixel and check if that vector is between the vectors of the poles. If it is, we will set the visibility for that object on that pixel to 1. If it is outside of the poles, we will set the visibility of it to 0. Ok, so let's get started with the material setup. What we have here is a first-person example project with starter content. So let's start by right-clicking and creating a new folder for our materials. And inside of that folder, let's create a materials and textures material function that will implement the logic of our cross product 2D. Open up the material function and click somewhere on the gray background and make sure to check expose to library in order to make it visible from inside of the material editor. Let's create the inputs for our vectors by right-clicking and choosing function input. We will need two of them because the cross product takes two operands. Name them A and B and gray counter for three components. And just implement the mathematical formula for the cross product, which is just multiply the x value of one vector with the y value of the other one to the same with the other combination and then just subtract the gotten values and that's it. Once we've done that, let's go back and create a material function that will handle the opacity mask. 
This part will be a bit more complex, but let's start by exposing our function to the library so that it can be found in the material later. And let's create two function inputs for our vectors that will represent the locations of the poles. Now these two inputs are the positions of the endpoints of the vectors that go from the camera to the poles. To get the endpoint of the vector that goes from the camera to the position of the pixel inside the world of the object, we will use something called world position. This node returns the position of the current pixel in world space. And we will subtract the camera position in world space from these three points in order to get the vectors from the camera to those points. Uh, let's rename these inputs, and to give you a better idea of what they represent, here is my beautiful art piece from a few minutes ago. Basically this top vector is the vector A that goes from the player to the first pole. This absolute world position vector will generate a vector that goes from the camera to each of the pixels that contain the object, and this would be the vector C that goes from the camera to the second pole. Now let's check if the 2D cross product of our vector that goes to the object and the vector that goes to the first pole is positive. Do this by using our cross product 2D function. And as you can see, I don't really want the inputs to be like this, so let's just set the priority of this input to 10. And now they're switched. So now calculate the cross product from the first pole vector to the object pole vector. And let's check if it's positive by creating an if node, plugging the cross product into the if, and compare it with zero. So if our cross product is greater than zero, we want to return one. And if it's less than zero, we want to, or equal, we want to return zero. This should do the trick. Now let's do that for our other two vectors. So check if the cross product of our object vector and second pole vector is greater than zero. If it is, return one, otherwise return zero. And now these two ifs will return 1 if their cross product is greater than 0, otherwise they will return 0. And since we want our function to return 1 if both of them are greater than 0, we can just multiply them. So if either one of these is 0, it will cancel the other one out when we multiply them, and it will result in our function returning 0. And that's our masking function done. So what we have here is these three vectors. One that goes from the camera to one of the poles, one that goes from the camera to the world location of each pixel that contains the object, and one that goes from the camera to the second pole. And then we check if the cross products of those vectors are positive, and if they are, we return one, otherwise we return zero. And now let's make a quick test material to test out. So right click in the content browser, go to materials and textures, create material, name it test material. So the first thing we want to do is click on the result node and set the blend mode to masked. That way we can modify the opacity mask and make some parts of the object invisible. After that we will need two vector tree nodes that we will convert to parameters so that we can modify their values from the code or blueprints. In the first one, pole 1, in the second one, right click, convert to parameter, pole 2, and then just call the mapping function, connect the inputs, and connect the result with the opacity mask node. Of course, the rest of the nodes can be filled as you please, so let's just make a red material for testing purposes, apply it, save it, and let's test it out. So, let's start by adding two cylinders, make them ultra thin and high to improve this effect. 
let's name it point one hold alt while dragging to duplicate it and let's create a cube that will be our object on which we will apply our material to okay select all three objects go inside the level blueprint and add the beginning play event and right click create different references and three selected actors so now we have references to our poles and our cube so the first thing we're going to do is create a dynamic material instance of our test material so that we can change its parameters in runtime then set the vector parameter value for the pole 1 and pole 2 to the world locations of the poles and after we've done that we just apply the material to our cube If we quickly compile it, save it, and load up the map to test it out. As you can see, when the cube is between the poles, it's visible, but as soon as a part of it goes outside of the two poles, its opacity mask is set to zero, so it stops rendering. If we go around it, it still won't show. So basically that's the effect that we were aiming for. To complete the 4D cube effect that we were aiming for, let's just quickly add three more objects inside this so we can render a different object for each side. And let's add two more poles to make the shape of a cube. After that, open up the blueprint editor. Let's clean this up a bit and move all of this into a function that will create and set test material and then what we will do is just add references to all the newly added objects and just copy this process for the rest of them So what we did here is make our cube object visible when it is between poles 1 and 2, our cone object visible between poles 2 and 3, our cylinder visible between poles 3 and 4, and our sphere visible between poles 4 and 1. So something's wrong. And that is because these poles aren't oriented in a clockwise fashion, counterclockwise action. So 1, 2, 4 and 3 should be swapped. We have the effect. We can also modify an existing material to allow support for this just by creating two vector tree parameters and naming them pole 1 and pole 2 and calling our masking function on them with the if the, there is currently an opacity mask we just multiply it with our current one, otherwise if there wasn't we would just plug this into the opacity mask. Also if the material isn't masked already we need to change the blend mode to mask. And once we've done that we can just modify our function so that it takes and material type as parameter 
and we can just set the materials that we want for our assets. Save and once we start, you will see that it also works perfectly with materials. One more thing that you can do to keep your code organized is you can move all your poles and objects inside of an actor class. You can store them as static mesh components that you can contain inside of arrays that you will build upon begin play and after that you can iterate through those arrays and assign poles and the materials to the objects. This will allow you to easily control the shape of the base. For example, we could easily just remove one pole and one object and get, create something like this with a triangular base or remove one more to create something with a two-sided base or just add as many of them as you want. It's up to you. And it also moves all of this logic outside of the level blueprint, so we don't have this mess where it doesn't belong. Thanks for watching and I hope this video helped you better understand the effect. Let me know if you notice I missed something, have any suggestions on how this can be improved, or know any other ways to implement it. I plan to continue recreating similar non-Euclidean effects like this one, so feel free to request what you want to see implemented in Unreal and subscribe. If you want to, of course. Bye-bye!